Hello, it's Gary Fox here, and we are today going to talk the last of the basic math videos that I'm going to produce for a while. And we're going to start talking about a general triangle, which is what I have drawn here on the screen. And the thing that I want to point out about any triangle is that the sum of the angles within that triangle are always going to be 180. And uh, that's always true. So we're going to talk now about a, a right triangle. So I'll zoom that up on the screen here. Okay, on a right triangle, we have one of these angles is already known to be 90. That's what defines it as a right triangle. So that means the sum of the other two are going to have to be 90 also. And what's the name of that is this angle up here at the top would be the complementary angle to the other angle. So in other words, a complementary angle is it complements another angle if it's 90 degrees minus that other angle. And that's really important and it's really useful in a lot of construction type work where you want to brace between two things that you have 90 degrees uh, in relationship to each other and you're wanting to make a brace between the two and you don't necessarily want a 45 and a 45 which adds up to 90 by the way but maybe you want a little different angle so like this one's looking about like it's 60 degrees and 30 degrees but it could be any angle that it needs to be to reach from one point to the other and so you can use a uh, framing square and go off of the one angle to cut the other angle that's how it's done pretty often anyhow uh, that's the main concept I wanted to show there now let's go back to the first triangle turn that one off zoom in and uh, anytime that you have any triangle you can make it into two right triangles by basically taking a perpendicular to one side and going up to the apex of the other side and now I have two right triangles and so now I can use all my sine and cosine and all those rules to calculate uh, what I need to know about this triangle. So that's very useful and uh, I use that a lot. Okay, now we're going to get into the uh, part of this whole discussion where I have to introduce one new, th new subject and uh, it just is the way it is. Okay, we're going to start with our Cartesian coordinate and assume that this is a, these are all in tenths of a unit, tenths of an inch or tenths of millimeters and we're measuring one centimeter, uh, whatever works for you right there. But assume that this is one right here, that's one in the y direction, minus one, one, minus one in the uh, y direction. Okay, we're going to draw a uh, unit circle around that thing so this circle has a radius of one okay I'm going to turn off my x-axis and y-axis temporarily just because they get drawn over and so we're going to start with a uh, radial line that runs from uh, and that's weird but it runs from the zero the center point to the outer radius of this circle and this is going to become very useful to what we do in the, in the future and so that radial line, since it's going to point one zero, we call that zero degrees. Or if it goes all the way around, it'd be 360 degrees. And we'll talk about what these other numbers here mean in just a minute. We'll do a, one more example. So now we have a 45 degree line. We've ran that 45 degrees. Notice we're going counterclockwise. And we're still in quadrant one. If you remember back when we first talked about Cartesian coordinates, this is called quadrant one, where both the x value and the y value is positive. Okay, at 45 degrees, if I take the sine of 45 degrees, I would end up with 0 0.707. And if I take the cosine, I would also end up with 0 0.707. And the sine value represents how, how, where it is on the, uh, the y-axis, or how tall it is. 
the x the cosine represents the x value and uh, right now we would still have a triangle if we drew that line straight down but things are going to get a little funny here in just a minute okay we're going to rotate on around to uh, 90 degrees now so we're straight up and the sine of that is uh, 1 and the cosine of that is 0 okay now we're going to talk about this other number right here in just a minute and uh, let's go ahead we'll rotate around now to 135 degrees which is 90 plus 45 and now all of a sudden our sine is positive still 0 0.707 but our cosine is negative now we're not really we're forming a triangle if you take this down to the closest axis to the closest x-axis but if you're looking at it from the main degrees right in here we're not really forming a right triangle anymore but by using this thing called the unit circle we're able to deal with degrees that are degrees other than less than 90 so we're now taking our our uh, trigonometry and we're expanding it past just a triangle and this is very helpful sometimes okay so now we'll go to uh, 180 and we'll start talking about what this number is right here where I'm saying pi okay another way of measuring the angle is what's called radians instead of using degrees we can use radians a radian is the distance along the circumference of the unit circle uh, with a with a measured in measured in uh, the length of a radius so we know that a circle all the way around a circle is 2 pi r so halfway around the circle would only be 1 pi r so our radial radian measurement is called pi is equal to 180 at 90 it would be pi over 2 45 it'd be pi over 4 and then when you get to here it's 3 pi over 4 uh, so that is what's called radians now the reason that I bring that up is that a lot of software that is the way they want the uh, measurement of an angle to be input it into them when they calculate sine and cosine and we're going to run into one of those real soon so it's something that you have to know if you're going to use that software and they they give a real easy way to work around it and you'll see that okay if we continue to measure down going around a circle we now have both a negative value for the sine and the cosine because we're in quadrant three where both values are negative continue going on around and we're not about we're back now where we have a minus one for our sine value because we're as low as we can go and we have a zero for our cosine and we go back around here and now we have a uh, positive value for the uh, cosine but a negative value for the sine and I want to point out we can measure the distance around a circle also in the negative direction so th this is 315 degrees if we measure it counterclockwise if we're going clockwise we would call it a negative 45 degrees this would be a negative 90 degrees I didn't write that down there so there's many many ways of describing this stuff okay also notice the sign gets positive all the way up to one and then it starts going back down so it's kind of symmetric there then it goes the sign goes negative in the same amount all the way to minus one and then it goes back down and then it reaches zero the cosine does the same thing cosines positive it starts decreasing to zero then it goes negative gets all the way to negative one and then it goes back decreasing in the negative direction which is really increasing <laughs> language is tough sometimes uh, 
it becomes less negative and then it gets back down to a zero and then it starts going positive again so that's going to lead us to another difficulty so you're always going to, have to think about what you're doing when you're when you're working these problems we'll deal now with a spreadsheet and I'll show you uh, I'll show you how that works out Okay, first thing in the spreadsheet, I do my formula, I write the ant, uh, numbers in degrees, and I did these all in 30 degree increments. And the first thing I have to do is I have to convert from degrees to radians, and they provide a real simple formula to do that, a real simple uh, function. You just write the radians of the number, you write radians before the number, and you put parentheses around the number that you're going to do, and that will give you the answer. In, uh, in radians. Then I'm taking the sine of that degrees of that angle and I'm taking the cosine of that angle. And you can see the formulas up here that I'm doing that with. Okay, things are really cool. We take the arc sign then. It should be the opposite, right? So we take the arc sign of the uh, sine value and that should give me right back to the same radians. And then I convert from radians to degrees with a simple math function that they provide called degrees. And I could have done that with uh, taking radians, divide by pi, and multiply by 180. But they provide the formula, so why do it? And our cosine, I do the same thing to the, to the si cosine value. And I come right back to the same degrees. Everything worked great. And it works for all three of these in the first quadrant. Now we're going to go to the second quadrant. We go to the second quadrant. And we take 120 degrees. We take the sine of that value. We take it and turn it into radians. Take the sine of the value and the cosine of the value. Then we take the arc sine of the sine of the value, and we come back with 60 degrees. In other words, it got confused. It didn't realize uh, that it was 120 degrees. It thought it was 60 degrees. It's going to give you an answer at 60. We do the arc cosine, and it does work out okay. So in this case, the cosine is symmetric and works works out okay or it works in both directions but the uh, sign doesn't work in both directions the sign gives you confusing values and uh, let's see what happens with these other two here now we'll go ahead and turn those on okay we're going around uh, 210 degrees we can go in the forward direction we convert them all to radians and then we uh, do the sine and then the cosine and then we do the arc sine or the anti sine and the arc cosine or the anti cosine and it's giving me negative values now <laughs> instead of values that are in the uh, in the forward direction so again you have to think about what you're doing here and uh, the arc cosine is also giving me the wrong values because it's starting to go back in the same direction it was before so it it's symmetric around 180 80 degrees this one's symmetric around zero but it goes in the negative direction on the uh, the arc the arc sign so in other words those rules that I told you last time even if you're using a computer program you're going to have to think about what your problem is and the best way to do that is to uh, draw it out that's not going to be a real big issue for where we're heading uh, what we're getting ready to do is we're getting ready to uh, calculate some stuff with using a spreadsheet knowing about the conversion from degrees to radians is going to be important because we all think in degrees but radians is the way the computer wants to think, so we have to convert from degrees to radians and from radians to degrees. From degrees to radians to get from human to, to computer and from radians to degrees to get from computer to human. <laughs> Sorry. 
degrees to radians to get from human to computer and radians to degrees to get from uh, computer back to human because we all think in degrees you give me this big long number right here and, and I have a problem probably the reason computers do it this way they could have done it the other way is that when you get to very small increments of a degree it is minutes and then increments of that minutes is seconds called arc seconds and uh, so those there's 60 minutes in a degree and 60 seconds in a minute and those numbers would not work out in a uh, decimal format so they just decide they would just make it in radians and we got to live with it and that's just is the way it is so anyhow that's pretty much everything I wanted to do on this one we are getting ready to uh, to talk about using some some trigonometry we're going to calculate the uh, how well a 55 gallon plastic drum would float if we were to build a raft using those 55 gallon plastic drums and uh, we will be using a lot of trigonometry in that and I've had some people say that they couldn't follow my math that I did on the one where I did it with PVC pipe so we're gonna go back and revisit it I'm going to do it with a video here and uh, I think you all be able to follow it so anyhow this is the end of uh, the basic math section for right now I'm sure some more math will come up later on but this should be enough to get you all by with understanding trigonometry uh, well enough to be able to do the uh, follow me and some of the other posts I use a lot of trigonometry by the way since we're talking about it okay radians for those of you that have followed the electronic stuff you know that you use 2 pi f very often in formulas like when you're talking about uh, inductance and capacitance and uh, inductive reactance capacitive reactance the 2 pi f is exactly this it's one frequency is one revolution around that unit circle so 2 pi is the time and it the full rotation around that circle and that's where that 2 pi f comes from uh, they're converting from uh, they're converting from degrees to radians and it's very very useful in calculus we're not going there uh, we're only going to be talking about algebra and trigonometry so we're not going to use calculus but that's where I, the 2 pi f is being used and it is having to do with radians. Appreciate you listening. Hopefully you got something out of this. This is Gary Fox of Create Make.